Welcome back my friends, I'm at Screwmatics here in South Carolina today, one of those companies that have well, well known, 36 years in the making, adapted automation, making 200 more parts per day thanks to automation with four hours of unattended operation, but it can be more. However, Billy, you and I both know it didn't start out on the best of times did it when it came to implementing automation. Not at all. And I bring that up, Billy, because there is a world of people out there, two sets of people. One, they're gonna feel everything you're saying about also struggling, and two, are scared to jump in or afraid to jump in because of this current situation that you had to go through as well. So Billy, let's talk about, although immense success right now, and also excitement for the future, it didn't start out that way. How did it start, my friend? Yeah, no, luckily, you know, we're in a great position now, but 10 years ago, we had a medical part that was very high volume, had 800,000 pieces due of four different components. And, uh, you know, our claim to fame is we will uh, rough out something on a screw machine and then come and do a second or third op on a CNC machine uh, if that is the process that, that makes sense. And for this particular instance, it made sense. And at 800,000 pieces times four, you know, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. And that's a lot of human interaction. So it just made sense 10 years ago, uh, we're, we're going to step our toes into some automation. And, you know, we are screw machinists, CNC machinists, Swiss machinists. We know machining. We don't know automation. So we called in a group. They come in, and we went with a uh, FANUC industrial robot. And, uh, you know, it's very pricey. We probably had around $150,000 in that. And we had about four months of trying to get it up and going. We got it up and going, but it wasn't reliable. It uh, would run maybe two hours. It would lose its position. And then the integrator wasn't the greatest at working with us to train us on how to, uh, to fix that issue. So they would charge us a service call, service call. It's very complicated to program. We can program machines all day, but the FANUC uh, robot, not so much. So we ended up getting fed up with it. It would not produce as many parts as a human would. We probably had like 15 to 20 at some time humans running these different cells. And the robot was just, it became a joke in the shop. And you know, that's something I tried to lead up and it was a little bit embarrassing for me. It was a failure. So we took it offline and we stuck it in the corner for, and it's been sitting for 10 years. Billy, 15 years, it had to be expensive, time consuming, frustrating, not only that, but the backlash of what comes with that is you have probably yourself, certainly some employees that now are gonna be hesitant on any automation moving into the future. And if we're being honest with ourselves, we kind of have to. Even in a production world, with labor shortages we have, with global competition that we have, to stay competitive, we have to implement automation. So to have that fear, to have that big boat anchor in the corner of the shop that everyone's like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. That in itself is a psychological misdemeanor, I would say, yeah. of how to move forward. And, and that was felt throughout the shop. It wasn't just absolutely. you, your shop yeah. employees felt it as well, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's. Uh we ended up getting that under control. We were able at that time to hire enough people, uh, invest in the people, invest in their training, which we still do today. But you know, as with any shop, uh, well, at least with, with us, what we want to do is our model is we're expanding, we're, we're building. We want to be, you know, we want to take on more volume. We didn't want to stop with this one product that's four parts, 800,000 pieces. You know, we have to have some depth. So we've taken on several other uh, jobs and then this particular one, this is very high volume. Right now I have 44 different part numbers and they're all very similar, just different sizes. And some of those are absolutely one operation complete, put them in Swiss machines. We have about 40 Swiss machines. I'll stack them in there, run them lights out. It runs great. But then these larger sizes, the math just makes sense. First operation, multi-spindle screw machine. Second operation in a, in a gang tool machine, loaded. And there's 44 parts, about 60,000 per part to 160,000 pieces per Ooh. part. It's a very high volume. So, you know, it started in the back of my mind, like, man, if we could get automation to work, this would be, this would be it. You know, it didn't work out on the last one. I really want to try it, but I definitely had some pushback from everybody here saying it's never going to work. This is a harder part to load than the medical part. 
Belly, you just named everything that I wanted to cover because it makes sense. The size of the job, the fact that we're competing, the, how much you're trying to get done. So we had to create that confidence. You built that confidence. You heard from a group called Productive Robotics. Yep. I see you have Wally right there. Great oh, yeah. movie, by the way. Absolutely. You and I are both daughter parents. Oh, yeah. So we Girl had dad. to have watched it. But oh. you've now jumped into this world. And I believe being price competitive was the first introduction for you to say, okay, okay, I, I, can, I can maybe give this a try again. Is that kind of the domino effect of how you started to incorporate these cobots? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, you know, I initially said we had $150,000 to get that up and going. By the time it was over with, I had $200,000 in this uh, industrial robot that sat in a corner for 10 years. And that was a waste of money. You know, I'd, I would love to have that money back, so it sat. So, I, you know, I knew we needed some automation. I was, you know, worried about wasting another quarter of a million dollars, and I get a cold call from Productive Robotics, and I'm giving the guy, I was just in a mood, and I was giving him a little bit of a hard time, and because I just, you know, heard it, seen it, and just wasn't interested, and then uh, at the end, he ends up giving me what the price is, and I was like, I mean, I'm not a salesman, I don't want to tell you how you do your job, but next time, lead with the price, <laughs> because I would have had to, I apologize for my tone, let's talk now. And uh, so that's what it was. It was a great price, and it, it, I couldn't afford not to try it. I lead with that next time. Lead yeah. with that next time for everyone who's watching. Start with that, you know. Start with that. Um, so now they've got your attention. You yep. decided you're going to give it a go. Yep. It's a three- or four-week time frame of getting this thing up and going. Yep. You said, you know what? we got to get moving. Let's give our friends over an absolute a call. Mm -hmm. And a friend of ours, Jeff, comes into the facility, oh, yeah. and how quickly do you get started and what happens after Absolute comes in? Oh yeah, so Absolute, I think the key is you have to have a great you know, vendors and great partners to make your, your shop successful. And we do so much volume, you know, we partner with the brass mills, and you know, I have confidence in my product because I have confidence in my supplier to supply that. And that was something that was lacking in, uh, in our automation is, you know, I have, you know, there's some other stories too I could go on, of other integrators coming in and it, it just didn't work out. So it's failure after failure and uh, you know, uh, Productive Robotics calls me, they tell me this price, I want it. We get the uh, robot, the cobot in and it's probably three or four weeks we try to do it ourselves. Uh, we ended up, uh, you know, I don't believe in having the cobot hit the cycle start button, that's just waste of time. The, ro the cobot opening the door, that's waste of time. So we're trying to integrate that. We got the foot pedal to go, it's open and closing the collet. And we called it quit. So I called Productive and was like, who is somebody? I need somebody. We need some help. We need to get y'all in here. So they gave us Absolute Machine Tools. And just a few weeks, they were down here. And, and again, people in my shop at Screwmatics had no confidence in it. We were just, you know, it's like, this isn't going to work. We're, so, we're now repeating what we did 10 years ago. Exactly. Oh, so gosh. we weren't a little prepared. We just had one machine set to the side. We put the cobot in the corner because we couldn't get it to, you know, to integrate. And um, they come in, and we move the cobot in front of the machine. And within an hour, hour and a half, he's got this whole thing integrated. And I was like, "Oh man, we're wasting this guy's time. <laughs> we got to, <laughs> I got to get, I got to get the other machine." So we move the other machine in place. And by the end of the day, he's got both machines integrated and the program's written, and now we're just doing some training on it. So it was, it was literally one day. Now, he ended up staying uh, two and a half days just because, you know, I wanted extra training, and I wanted him to see, you know, some other projects we have. Billy, I hear this story, and I know what you're referring to is a cobot that's actually sitting behind the cameras right now, and yep. that one was set up. You said got it done in an hour, but I see two more here as yes. well. So now what I'd love to talk about is, We've gone over the frustration. We've gone yep. over the lack of confidence. We've gone over implementing a cost-effective solution and bringing in an integrator to make it work productively, efficiently, yes. effectively. What does the future look like with your automation? Do you now have the confidence? Do your team members have the confidence? Do you look forward to implementing more and more of these around your 160,000 and growing oh, square yeah. feet here at Screwmatics? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, you know, we started with this one that's behind the cameras, and this is a medical part, very high volume. Uh, this over a million parts a year. It's one operation on Swiss, and then there is a very fine, complicated thread. Um, and it's wild that we picked that part, because it's very complicated. The thread, the start of the thread, is two-start thread, has to be oriented to the flat uh, that's on the part. And that's a very complicated thing to load. It has to be loaded 
accurately. And everybody was like, even if you get it integrate, it's not going to load it that accurate. And within about two weeks, there was zero scrap. It ran uh, almost 400 parts more, per 200 parts more per day. And then I ran it a second shift, so I got 400 more parts and no scrap. Everything's great. Started getting some believers, you know. And um, uh, then it was a no-brainer. We need two more of these because I had this other project that we're looking at right here. That, this is the one with the 44 uh, different part numbers, very high volume. And again, we're blanking them off on screw machines. We got humans loading these things. And I, it's the volumes are, I need, I need a second shift. In rural America, we only have 2,700 people here in this town. We got some big industry. And I can't get a second shift. Post-COVID, I have not had a second shift since COVID and I have desperately needed one. Now I have one. I have about 15 machines I run on uh, Swiss bar fees, and now I have four machines run on Robots Cobots. And so that's what it is. It, as soon as this proved itself in two weeks, and then I did the math and saw how much more it was getting, like we're buying two more of these right now. So we bought two more, and probably by the end of the day, now that they're here, you know, I'm probably gonna order two more, <laughs> doing this exact same, just a different part number. Um, and then probably by the end of the year, I'm expecting another two to four more, just adding two and two and two. And you see our philosophy is we put this behind, um, we put it beside a cell of two machines. So one Cobot's running two machines. Mm -hmm. And I had other integrators tell me like, you're setting stuff up for failure with the complicated medical part and trying to do two machines at once. And with Absolute Machine Tools, we had it running in a day. And we haven't, it, we hadn't had to touch it since. I'd make the discussion that you're setting yourself up for success, Billy. Absolutely. I think that not for failure, for success. And this is the confidence that we all need. I want to clarify one thing as we wrap up this conversation, mm -hmm. Billy. And it's something you've already mentioned. It's something both you and I know. But it's also probably a conversation that the audience might be having with themselves right now. And that's the ability of a human versus a cobot to do things faster. And yet you're doing 200 more a day. Now, if you and I were to have a race on these machines, we would beat the cobot. Oh, absolutely. We would win. Yep. We, can, we can literally move quicker than these things can, do load and unload, we can do that. But it's more about that, that extra time in the evening. It's more about not taking those breaks. It's more about not having to call in sick with absolutely. our kids or whatever. That's kind of the full corp incorporation of where this better efficiency comes from at the end of the day, yep. isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, I've been to uh, IMTS, I've been to all these shows, and you see these cobots, and they are slow. Like, I think, like, what idiot would buy one of these? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're slow. And But the, the fact of the matter is, like you said, whenever the cobot does not take breaks, and, you know, somebody comes by, and they, you know, make a comment on somebody's shoes they're wearing, they take three seconds out where the sh machine might be stopped, and they sit here and tell them about, oh yeah, I got, you know, I've got this from here. And they have a side two minute conversation, no big deal. But that makes a big difference in your end of day production. And the cobot never stops to talk it never takes a break, never has to go to the bathroom and doesn't take a lunch break, doesn't get hungry. And uh, because of that, we're immediately first day. And I was shocked. I just thought, it would, yeah, it's going to be a little slower, but at least I can have the machine running instead of sitting because I can't get any workers in the door. But to my surprise, wow, it's making 200 more parts a shift than what the human was. And, I, and I, I'm not knocking the operators. I have great operators here. And the fact that it was making 200 more parts from the guy who was running it and the same machine beside it, that's impressive because he is one heck of a worker. You can't find people like him on the street every day. He just He is an excellent worker, but for the robot to catch that up and, and beat that, it's, it's a no-brainer. It, yeah, Game and changer. When, and when we do this, we see it firsthand how yep. it works. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you guys and gals out there. Thank you all for watching. This is Screwmatics. If somebody wants to learn more about Screwmatics, Billy, where can we find more of you? Yeah, so go check us out on our website, uh, www.screwmatics.com. And uh, you'll see, you know, we've been here. I'm second generation in this business. Been here 36 years. I'm 35. I was born right into it. Uh, we started with, you know, two little brown and sharp machines, and now we're 110 employees, over 200 machines from Swiss machines, twin spindle Nakamura's, uh, milling machines, and gang tool Dusans, Lynx. Uh, we have such a, a wide variety of different machines. Uh, we, we can meet so many different demands and parts, and 
capabilities. In all sorts of different industries as well. Absolutely. I've gone through your yep. demo area. That would be beautiful in all oh, sorts yeah. of different industries. So if you're looking for that partner out there, I can say firsthand on behalf of MTD CNC as well, check these guys out. Check Billy out. He's 35. Maybe by the time you see this video, he'll be a little bit younger. Who knows? But he's 35 <laughs> years old. The company's been around 36 years. And this is the type of company you can rely on and partner with for those parts that you're looking to get done effectively, efficiently, and productively, as you can th see with the help of Absolute Machine Tools as well. Thank you all for watching MTDC and C. We'll see you all again soon.